Implication, implication, implication is a word that means what you really mean behind what you are saying or asking. So the, the meaning behind your question or the meaning behind your statement. There's a hidden meaning of sorts like that. That's what you call the implication of what you're saying. Uh-oh, -uh, uh-oh, who's there? <laughs> Hi, Shabby. Okay, go back to your seat. Hey, good morning, everybody. It is time. Good morning. Yeah, you finish your breakfast. It's time. Finish your coffee. All right, Shavi, go back to your seat. Today is December 6th already. It is the feast of a very important saint, a very popular saint in the church. And that is... Saint Nicholas! Old Saint Nick. Right? Saint Nicholas. Okay, so Saint Nicholas. What do we know about Saint Nicholas? Santa Claus. <laughs> well, he is said to be, he is said to be the uh, the original Santa Claus. Okay, uh, Nicholas. Nicholas is his name in the Greek uh, church. But anyway, Saint Nicholas is a very early saint. When did he live? Let me see. If I, uh, he lived in uh, the 4th century, as early as 325, he was already in the council, oh, okay, he was in the council of Nicaea. Okay, so he was the Bishop of Barry. Anyway, the story of uh, St. Nicholas is that he came from a very wealthy family, but his parents died when he was very young. So he inherited all the riches of uh, his parents, but what he did Instead of, uh, instead of enjoying all of the riches of his parents for himself, what he did was, well, he decided to use all of that inheritance to uh, provide for the needs of the poor and whoever was in need. Okay? So voluntarily, and this is very important for today's gospel, voluntarily, in other words, on his own will, on his own accord, Okay? St. Nicholas gave up, okay? gave up his riches in order to provide for others because, because of his compassion. He was compassionate. He had a sense of compassion for other people. And it's, uh, it's something that emulates what our Lord also shows us in today's gospel, compassion. Okay? What is compassion? Okay? Compassion from, uh, from the Latin word uh, compati. Okay? Compassio means, means to feel the pain of another. Okay? To be sensitive enough to feel the pain of another person. <clears throat> now, we we'll learn today how that can be done, how that happens. Okay? And uh, a good example is, well, our Lord in this gospel today and also St. Nicholas, whose feast we celebrate today. Okay, but anyway, let's read the gospel. So this is the story. That it's long, but I will uh, summarize the first part of it. Our Lord goes out walking in the Sea of Galilee, and then he goes up to the mountain, and crowds follow him. Crowds follow him, and he starts preaching. He starts teaching to them. And they stayed with him for three days. Eh? So he didn't want to just dismiss them and say, okay, uh, be gone now. <laughs> I'm done teaching you. No, they stuck it out with him. And our Lord had compassion because they had neither uh, you know, a place to rest nor food to eat. And they've been following him for, for the last three days. See? So our Lord felt pity on the crowds and decided to perform a miracle. So Jesus summoned his disciples and said, my heart is moved. With pity for the crowd, for they have been with me now for three days and have nothing to eat. I do not want to send them away hungry, for fear they may collapse on the way. The disciples said to him, where are we going to get enough bread in this deserted place to satisfy the crowd? Jesus said to them, how many loaves do you have? Seven, they replied. And a few fish. He ordered the crowd to sit down on the ground. And then he took the seven loaves and the fish. Gave thanks. Gave thanks. 
broke the loaves and gave them to his to, to the disciples, who in turn gave them to the crowds. They all ate and were satisfied. They picked up the fragments left over, seven baskets full. This is the miracle. That's another miracle. There are, seven, there are two, at least two of these miracles recorded where our Lord uh, multiplies uh, bread and fish. Okay, So, uh, note what our Lord teaches us here. Number one is compassion. Right? He felt pity for the crowd. He had compassion for the crowd. And that is what led his, his compassionate heart to uh, uh, um, feed them, to perform the miracle of the multiplication of the loaves and fishes, to feed them. But look at our Lord, how our Lord starts to do this. First, he starts it by giving thanks to God, by recognizing the blessings that he had at his disposal at that time, which is what? Seven loaves of bread. That is what he had and a few fish. So he gave thanks to God for having that, for, e for God even providing that out of perhaps out of nowhere because they didn't really know what he had, right? That's why he had to ask the disciples, well, how, what do we have around here? Okay? And he gave thanks to God first because at least there was those seven loaves. There was at least a minimum that he could work with. But look at what he did. He multiplied the little that, you, that they had because they gave him everything they had. Eh? The apostles gave Jesus everything that they had. They did not keep anything for themselves. And they said, oh, wait a minute. Uh, let me keep one because, uh, you know, it's dangerous. It might, uh, all these seven loaves might just disappear and I will be hungry. So let me keep one for myself first. And then uh, I give Jesus the rest so that he can do what he wishes out of it. No. Right? Look at the disposition of the disciples. They gave everything to Jesus, trusting that Jesus was going to do the best thing with it. And he did. He performed a great miracle of the multiplication of the loaves. So, lessons for us. Lessons for us on today's gospel. Number one, be compassionate with others. Feel the pain of other people. And number two, be generous when you give. Be generous without holding back, without thinking twice and asking first and, and, and being concerned first of yourself. You know what? And these two things actually come together when you practice compassion. Because to practice compassion, to have compassion on others, you have to first forget yourself. See? You have to deny yourself of the things that you have, the things you like, the things you possess. Otherwise, you will have no room in your heart for other people because you'll be too full of yourself. See? You'll be too concerned only about what satisfies yourself. Therefore, you can, it's hard to part with what you have. It will be hard to part with what you have and give to others. Okay? So, compassion means those two. Okay? Denying yourself of the legitimate things that you have, the nice things you have, the comforts you have, and offering them to others out of pity, out of compassion for them. But always remembering to be thankful first for what you have. Right? Be thankful to God for whatever it is you have, no matter how little. And especially if you have much. Right? Be thankful to God for all of that. And then, and then be generous in sharing what you have with others out of compassion okay so again we're still in the spirit of thanksgiving remember what i've said thanksgiving is is seasonal for us it's the entire season it's not only one day on thanksgiving day right it extends all the way to uh forever <laughs> okay it has to be a habit so look what our lord did here before performing the miracle again thanksgiving thanksgiving he gave thanks for what he had before performing the miracle now best catholic practice how are we to train ourselves to be compassionate because the virtue of compassion does not happen all of a sudden 
See? It is something we can train for. It is something we can practice for. So that when we see other people in need, then we know how to attend to them. And by the way, we don't even have to go out of the house, right? With your own brothers and sisters, you can exercise compassion. Okay? You can feel their pain. You can feel what they need. You have to have enough sensitivity to understand what they might need at the moment. When they ask, not only when they ask you for help, but even when they don't ask you for help. Okay? Compassion begins at home, just like any virtue begins at home. You cannot perform virtues outside with other people if you don't first do it at home with your own brothers and sisters, your own siblings, your own parents. Okay? But how can we train for compassion? How can we train for compassion? One very simple recommendation is to learn to practice self-denial. Okay? Self-denial, mortification is the road to compassion and how do you do that well you have to voluntarily deny yourself of the pleasures the good things the nice things you have for example and they have to be very they don't have to be big things you can start from very little i like the dessert on the table i like that pie i like that apple pie or the pumpkin pie very much and instead of taking a huge slice of it because that's my favorite I'm going to take half, half, because I want to mortify. I want to deny myself. See? Oh, it's very cold. It's winter already. I feel cold. I feel cold. I feel cold. Well, maybe offer up, sacrifice the cold. See? Instead of complaining, instead of trying to uh, 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 broadcast to the world, oh, I'm suffering, I'm cold. Bear it a little bit. Bear it a little bit. Deny yourself the comforts of, uh, of uh, warmth. Okay? And that is mortification. Okay? What about when somebody annoys you and you want to lash back on that person and say, how stupid he is. How you know? What about keeping quiet? What about really keeping it inside and giving that person a nice smile instead? See? Smile at your brother, smile at your sister who annoys you instead of lashing out at him or her because he or she annoys you, right? So you deny yourself the, 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 <laughs> the satisfaction of pouncing on the other person and keeping it to yourself and just say a prayer for that brother, for that sister, okay? Instead of lashing out. And, and giving vent to anger or to whatever it is. Right? So there are many little things like those. And then sometimes voluntarily giving. Voluntarily giving even without the other person uh, asking for it. Okay? Voluntarily offering your help. Do you need help? The very important question. Do you need help? See? How many times have we, have we repeated that question to our own brothers and sisters? Can we help them with their chores? Can you, can you help other people in, with the ordinary things that they do every day? How many, how many of you have offered help to do the chores at home? Okay. Volunteered your time instead of, ah, I have a little free time. <laughs> let me practice guitar or let me play music or let me uh, do. Well, of, of course, you can always do those things. Those are very good things to do, right? But, but. You might also want to offer up the comfort of just sitting in a corner reading a book or, or listening to music or doing your own thing when you know that there's something that needs to be done at home. When you know that maybe something needs to be cleaned. When you know something perhaps needs to be attended to and fixed or something like that. Okay? These are all part of denying yourself, being conscious of the things that you can deny yourself in, in order to train yourself to be compassionate for others. Okay, that's it for us, folks. We are off to Mass this morning. I hope you all have a very nice day, and everybody is awake and ready to uh, 
fight the cold. <laughs> it's going to be a long day for us of school and work at home. So have a good day, everybody. And hopefully we'll try to exercise some compassion beginning today. A little bit more as we prepare for the coming of Jesus at Christmas time. This Advent season is a very nice time to deny ourselves. Not only for the sake of compassion, but for the sake of our own self-purification. Because self-denial helps us in that too. It helps us to purify our souls. Have a good day. See you tomorrow. Here's my Bye. thumbs up for you. <laughs> thumbs up.